Today I want to talk about something that seems like a bit of a divergence from the usual material on this channel, but I promise it does relate. Today I want to talk a little bit about AI, and in particular about AI and its relation to human consciousness. So yeah, we're going to get a bit deep and interesting today. So some of you may be aware already of some of the innovations in AI that have happened recently. You may be aware of things like GPT-3, the AI algorithm that can produce text and all sorts of shapes and forms. You can tell it, you know, I want a article written about Lamborghini cars and it will write you an article about Lamborghini cars. Or you can, you know, get a conversation going with a GPT chatbot and ask it a bunch of questions and it will have a conversation that reads very much like a human conversation. Um, GPT-2 was already incredibly impressive but GPT-3 has just taken it to a whole new level and I've played around with it a little bit and it's just blown my mind. Like um, you could tell me a lot of the time that I was chatting with a real person and I would be fairly convinced that I was. In fact I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people you know that you could chat to online that, you know, their writing text skills aren't that great or, you know, maybe English isn't their first language who would seem and come off more robotic than the actual AI algorithms. But the one that really blew my mind recently was not GPT-3. It was OpenAI's DALI-2. Some of you have probably heard of this already. Marquez Brownlee did a recent video on this that was very popular and a lot of other creators have been paying attention to this and having a look at it recently. Essentially what DALI 2 is, is a continuation of various image related AIs that were developed. Originally, people developed these AI algorithms to look at images and identify the objects in the images. If you've ever seen one of those Google capture tests pop up and, you know, ask you to pick out all of the street signs or all of the crosswalks or whatever, you've actually been helping train one of those AI algorithms to identify those objects in pictures. But DALI 2 is one of a series of AI algorithms to take this idea and basically flip it on its head. They've had these AIs that will look at an image and come back and spit out some text identifying the things in the image. So people have this idea, what if we could do it the other way around? What if we could feed an AI some text and it would generate an image of the things that we described? Early attempts at this were very rudimentary and the results that you get would be very, very abstract. There are sites like Night Cafe Studio, which I've played around myself with generating AI art on. And you can type in, you know, different prompts, different art styles and so on, and come up with some really cool images. I'll actually share a few creations of mine and the prompts I use to generate them on the screen right now. And you know, it's fun for making some interesting abstract art. But all of these algorithms were fraught with problems. You would type in all of these things and it was generally too complicated. The AI would spit out these images and you would see like little bits and pieces of the things that you wrote into your prompt, but a lot of the time it would not even remotely resemble what you actually typed out. DALI 2, however, along with Google's new Imogen algorithm, have actually pretty much completely solved this problem by now. You can type in the most strange or abstract or weird things into DALI 2 and it will spit out a pretty much near perfect image of the thing that you described. So you can type in an ancient Egyptian painting depicting an argument over whose turn it is to take out the trash and get this. Or photo of an oversized grizzly bear wearing sunglasses and a leather jacket being interviewed on the Joe Rogan podcast experience and get this. These are just a couple of images I selected from the DALI 2 subreddit that I think perfectly capture just how crazy this algorithm is and that it can pretty much come up with whatever it is you feed it. Now, if you examine these images closely enough, you'll find there are still some little weird things about it. Um, sometimes it has difficulty getting certain details right and certain things look a tiny bit off. But at a glance, when you look at these images, they are exactly what you've asked the algorithm for. And it can do photorealistic images, Images, it can do people, it can do animals, it can do paintings, it can do drawings, it can imitate the art style of famous painters and artists, it can combine ideas like, you know, taking some modern thing and then, you know, replicating it in an ancient style, like the ancient Egyptian painting one. And it's kind of just mind boggling, really, to look at. 
I know growing up we had all of these ideas of what the future would look like. Flying cars and people on hoverboards and all of that sort of thing, you know, sci-fi, cyberpunk type worlds that we might live in. And a lot of that stuff that we look forward to, you know, it never really came to pass. Maybe it'll happen in the future, but it's at least not happening now. But this, this really took me by surprise because if someone had told me, you know, 10 years ago, we'll have a technology that you can just type anything to it and it will generate a photo of that, a painting of that or whatever, completely from scratch. Because by the way, this algorithm isn't just mashing existing images together. It is understanding what these things in the image are and it is then creating a new image from scratch. If someone had suggested that this would be a possible future technology and asked me to predict how long it would take for us to get that, I would have predicted this might be something we have in like 2150, you know, 130 years from now, not something that we would have in 2022. So it's like this feeling of the future actually being here and actually being almost crazier in a lot of ways than we could have predicted. But what really excites me as a lucid dreamer about this is Dali 2 almost feels like a replica of the human mind's eye. The way that it can synthesize new ideas, blend styles, recreate things in a completely different style, and just take a text idea and then visualize it, is a lot like how the mind's eye works. I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about how when you're reading a book, you know, you read those words on the page, and your mind's eye is taking that text and coming up with an image for it, just the way that Dali 2 is doing. So essentially, we've come up with a computerized mind's eye, and the thing is, I don't know about you, you know, some people have clearer mental images than others. Some people with aphantasia don't actually have any, but I think most people who do have some level of mental imagery will agree that it tends to be a little bit blurry. Like you can come up with an image in your mind's eye and you can see it, you can visualize it, you can examine it in lots of different ways, but it's not like it's there. It's not like when you're in a lucid dream in front of it or when you're in front of it in the real world or when you're looking at it in a photograph, unless you are one of these rare people who do have like a photographic mind's eye. But here with Dali 2, we can create these photographic, realistic looking images from text. And that is so cool to me because in a way we have replicated one of the things that makes up the human mind. And, you know, that's the sort of first step towards the idea of, you know, if we could ever make a conscious AI. Whether that's something that's even a possibility or not, I have no idea. But it is spooky that we've been able to replicate this function that we have. Not to mention that I think this must be a really cool technology for people who don't have a working mind's eye. For people that do have aphantasia or similar issues or just a really, really unclear, murky, blurry mind's eye, they could use a tool like this to help them visualize things. They could use DALI 2 or similar future AIs to help them synthesize new ideas and visualize things or to help them bring life to some of the things that they read in books. You know, they can take a line describing a character in one of their favorite books, feed it to Dali 2 and finally get an idea of what that character might actually look like. And I just think that is super awesome and I'm so excited for this technology and I thought, you know, it might be something worth making a video about and discussing with you guys. What do you guys think about this? You know, I've discussed this with different people. Some people are a bit nervous, you know, worried this is going to disrupt the art world and devalue art and so on. Some people think it's just a bit too spooky and uncanny. Other people are just as excited as me and think this is amazing and, you know, the start of perhaps even greater AI technologies. And what do you guys think about what I said about this being almost like a you know, synthetic version of the mind's eye? Could this even be something that, you know, became like a prosthetic for people that do have aphantasia in the future? Or well, maybe not a prosthetic as such, but like a tool that you could use to aid in your lack of mental imagery. Like, you know, maybe you would put on your VR headset or whatever and, you know, just type to it and have it visualize things for you or speak to it and have it visualize things for you to substitute for your lack of inner mental imagery. I have applied to be on the waitlist for DALI 2, but I haven't actually been given access yet. Um, hopefully that happens in the future. We'll see what happens. If it does, I will make another video on this and share some like creations that I make with it. Um, if in the rare instance, someone from OpenAI happens to be watching this, definitely search your like <laughs> waitlist for Tifero and get me in on that and I will definitely make some videos about it. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this or other AI algorithms and so on down below. And remember to subscribe, enable all notifications so you can stay up to date when new videos come out. And if you want to keep watching, check out one of the videos on screen. Go watch that and I'll see you there soon. Take care.